It's a pleasure to be here today to, uh, to talk to you about things that are happening at Tampa International Airport. Um, <clears throat> let me begin by citing uh, the law that actually created the airport. Uh, this is stated in, in Florida state law. It says that the economic validity and stability of the publicly owned airports is a matter of statewide importance. So we, we have a responsibility to make sure the airport is economically stable. It's not only a matter of statewide importance, it's a matter of national importance. It's a national asset. And uh, Tampa Airport, as, as everybody here knows, this is, that airport is your airport. It's the community's airport and was designed in a brilliant fashion and today has one of the best customer service ratings of any airport in the country. But also the policy of state says it's our duty to promote the development of commerce and tourism, to secure to the people of the state the benefits of those activities. Uh, so as you know, uh, when I first got here, uh, there was a, a clamor about the fact that I wanted to market and get international flights. Basically says that in a law, that it's our responsibility to bring commerce and tourism through that airport. That's the only reason it was created. Um, and we had a vision for, for doing things and creating something that doesn't exist, which this board has as well. Uh, there were people who said you can't get international flights here and you shouldn't spend any money marketing for international flights. There were people who said that. But there are people sitting at this board who said, no, I'm going to give you money to market for international flights. And we now have the proof in the pudding. And I'm going to show you that in just a moment. So I say to you, uh, the vision is the key. And uh, people with vision can make a change in a community. Uh, we have 600 people who report to me at the authority. 7,500 people work at the airport. Uh, there are 24,000 local jobs that are created just by the airport. And we generate about $7 billion a year in economic activity. Um, interesting fact, 30 of, only 30% of our passengers come from Hillsborough County. Another 30% come from Pinellas County. And I will uh, say this for uh, our CEO, Brad Miller. I asked him to come on out and, and visit with me at the airport, and he did. And I asked him for uh, a bus from St. Pete to the airport. And the answer was, let me take a look at that. And now I understand you have a bus that's going to do just that in this year's budget. And so I applaud you for that. There's 30% of my customers come from Pinellas County. And now they can come to the airport and not have to pay for parking and uh, decongest the roadways and so on. So I, I applaud you for that solution. Believe it or not, 8% of our customers come from Sarasota. So we are truly the gateway to the west coast of Florida. In 2012 alone, more than 2.6 million Pinellas County visitors came through Tampa International Airport, stayed in the hotels in Pinellas, and spent money here. We have been very aggressive in trying to grow our international and domestic access. And you can see here on this slide, we have had some great successes. Uh, more recently, I'll point out down to the lower right, Seattle on Alaska Airlines. We now have nonstop flights to Seattle, never existed in the history of the airport. So now you can leave Seattle at uh, 9 in the morning and be on the beach for sunset here. Now, if you've been to Seattle, the beach is a nice idea. <laughs> uh, the, and the only other beach that you can get to in the United States from Seattle is Hawaii. So this flight is now running in, uh, in July. It ran over 90% load factor. And I get emails from people who say, Joe, thank you for this flight. I just flew nonstop to Seattle. So it's working. Our strategy is working. Um, we just also got a new nonstop flight to Los Angeles from American. So now we have Delta and American flying to LA. The next place we need is San Francisco. So we're working on that right now. Okay. Uh, in addition, this winter, Tampa will see additional COPA flights and British Airways flights. We have now daily uh, 777 service on British Airways to London. We have two flights a week to Zurich on Edelweiss. Who would have thunk it that we would have nonstop service to Zurich, Switzerland? But we do. Uh, Cuba, we have three cities that we serve with 10 flights a week. And that's a reflection of our, the historic Cuban-American population that exists in our community. And the one I think is that I'm most proud of is COPA Airlines to Panama, four times weekly service that began in December. But they're going to fly daily, uh, November, December, and January of this year. And that flight is doing great. So if you want to go to Brazil, you can go to Panama and connect to seven cities in Brazil. You can connect to six cities in Colombia. You can connect to three cities in Costa Rica. So this is the gateway to the Americas. And, and this community is now connected to all of the Americas through that flight. In fact, our international traffic since I got here is up 42 percent. Uh, this was a mandate from my board, just like you are giving mandates as board members here. My board said, I want you to go out and grow international traffic. And so I put together a plan. 
I went and saw uh, Commissioner Latvala and the, the tourism folks here in Pinellas, and they actually gave us money to be spent at Tampa, at Tampa Airport to get flights because they understood that the customers that come in on those flights are going to stay in Pinellas County hotels and go to the beaches. And now we have uh, the, the rewards of that investment that we've made, and we'll continue. And the reason we do that is because we create jobs. And one international daily nonstop flight has a $154 million economic impact. More importantly, it creates 1,200 jobs. So you, you may wonder, like some economist up in Boston came up with this number, but think about it this way. We got 300 people coming in today from London. They're going to arrive at 5 o'clock. They each have 10,000 euros in their pocket, mm -hmm. and they're going to leave them in our community and then go home. And you don't have to educate their kids, and you don't have to build them any roads. <laughs> <laughs> this happens every day. So it's a worthwhile that investment. <laughs> That's the best foreign investment you can get. <laughs> now I'd like to talk to you about our 2012 master plan. Um, and this is, uh, well, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, here's our projected passenger traffic. We're going to double in passengers in the next 20 years. The FAA requires us to do a master plan every five to seven years. The plan says we're going to double in passengers. Now, can you imagine, you've, you've driven through the airport, and it's a pretty nice ride into the airport. Sometimes it's a little crowded. Can you imagine twice as many cars? Can you imagine twice as many passengers on the transfer level? Okay, so that's what we're looking at. We, like you, are looking into the future and seeing something that is not sustainable. So we have to act. We cannot kick the can down the road. I will not do that. We will act and we will do it right. And I'm going to show you how that works. The master plan's findings, very simply, uh, the main terminal is nearing maximum capacity. Around the holidays or spring break, when you're trying to uh, meet and greet, you'll see the people coming off the shuttle cars. Very difficult, difficult to get to the escalators. Mm -hmm. Imagine twice as many people there. The curbside, nearing maximum capacity. You've probably been to the curbside and been backed out onto the roadway. That's an unsafe condition. We had to deal with that. Our roadways are nearing maximum capacity. Um, our rental car facility, which is hugely important for Pinellas County, is now at capacity. It cannot, it cannot grow. Now, we are the ninth largest rental car market in the whole country. So people come to Florida, they rent cars, and they drive to the beach. And so it's important yes. that we have the ability to grow that so that this county can grow in tourism. And our long-term parking was at maximum capacity. So uh, one of the solutions that the planners brought back to me was, well, let's build more roads and let's build another parking garage. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's the best you got? Really? <laughs> they said, well, it's really cheap. I said, I'll worry about the money. You come back to me with the right answer. The right answer, it turns out, is to move the rental car facility because the rental cars were generating 8,500 car trips a day. That caused our roadway congestion. That caused our curbside congestion. And our parking lot was we needed more parking spaces. Well, the rental car facility takes up two floors of our parking garage. So as soon as you move the rental car, you solve all these problems. And that's what we're going to do. So. There are three major elements to this, this plan. Number one, the transfer level, which is where you go to catch the shuttles, will be expanded by 50,000 square feet. We're going to push the shuttle bays out of the building, one full car length. And then we're going to build out to the east and west, uh, 50,000 square feet, and we're going to put restaurants out there with outdoor dining. I'll show you that in a moment. We're going to build a 2.3 million square foot consolidated rental car center on the south, the south of the airport. And then we're going to connect that building to our main terminal with a 1.3 mile automated people mover system. Mm -hmm. The whole project is $943 million. Wow. My board approved it. We're going forward with it. We've already awarded contracts. We will create more than 9,000 temporary jobs. We'll have, I have 600 people who work for me at the airport. We'll have 900 people at any one time working on this project. And I've been told by our contractor community, we don't have enough tradesmen in a community to do this work. We're going to have to bring people in from Louisiana and Texas, where they left, when things got bad here, they're going to come back and work here in Florida. Um, now, what this does is it takes, um, it takes cars off the road and provides solutions. So we took 8,500 car trips off the road. Now I don't have to build more roadways. I have 20 years' worth of growth, and I move the rental cars to the south. So when you come in off the highway, you go directly to the rental car. When you rent your car, you go directly on the road, and we don't interact with those cars. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> it's a transit solution within my little envelope of the airport. It's a, it's a train that's going to get the cars off the road so I don't have to build roads. 
And when we get the buses to the airport, I won't have to build parking garages because people will have a way to get there. So here's, here's a view of the Consolidated Rental Car Center. The, co the Consolidated Rental Car Center building is $318 million. Um, the train will actually pull in right here, and the doors will open, and you'll be looking at Hertz. So once the doors open, you can take your, wheel, your wheelie bag and go right to your car. No steps, no escalators, perfect customer service. And the automated, the automated people mover budget is $417.5 million. And you may have heard that we got a grant, a very generous grant from the state of $194 million from the Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, that's how much they believe in this project. And now here's the transfer level. I talked to you about the fact that we're going to uh, push it out to the sides. We're going to create really cool food courts. Uh, all, new, all new concessions programs, so all of our concessions are going to be redone by 2017. So we may see Chipotle out there. We may see a Brooks Brothers or an Ann Taylor store that doesn't exist today. All new concepts will be at the airport by 2017. Oops. Thanks. Now, uh, this all ties in, and what we were told, okay, so construction begins at the end of 2014. There, we're going to have four tower cranes around the main terminal. And we'll have probably four tower cr cranes down at the Conrack site. So uh, you drive in right now, it's very peaceful, very beautiful. Uh, we're going to try to keep it peaceful and beautiful, but we have to build, build this building. So I just, uh, th as a point of information, at the end of 2014, you're going to start seeing a lot of activity uh, out at the airport, but it'll all be completed. Plan is by 2017. Now, we want to be able to connect to the region. and so. Here we go. Uh, the, the Florida Department of Transportation has selected a recommended a site for an intermodal center at, at West Shore. Okay, we want to be able to connect to that uh, from the airport. So there again, uh, we want nonstop buses to the airport, but also if you want to get there through the intermodal center, we want to have a connection to the airport as well. This gives people an opportunity to go there and not have to pay for parking, save money, and get there a little bit more conveniently. Um, and this is the future express bus plan for uh, Pinellas County under the green light plan. And you can see all the green lines are uh, what are known as express bus service to the airport. Uh, and as I said, 30% of our customers come from Pinellas. And I will tell you that there are many, many European visitors who come and, and are always ask us, how, do I, how can I take a bus to the beaches? How can I take a bus to anywhere? And uh, we have to tell them we, you can't. And um, that's an unacceptable answer. The other thing to remember is when, when I talk about international growth, we're going to get flights internationally because we're behind. So we're going to get what we really deserved. But for us to go forward, for us to grow into the future, we have got to have a world-class transit system to attract young people, create jobs, and create a future for us so that we can have more visitors come, so that we can have more travel, more opportunities. We cannot stay stagnant. And that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to entertain them. Ms. Lopano, thank you so much uh, for your leadership. You are making uh, one of the best airports in the nation into one of the best airports in the world, if not the best. The people from overseas, right. international travelers, expect a mass transit op option. If you've traveled to foreign airports, especially European airports, mm -hmm. there's at least a train, if not buses, to just about everywhere. Um, uh, so that's what they expect when they come here. They ask those types of questions. but. I would tell you that I think success breeds success. It's like the international flights that we're getting at the airport. Once we bring an international flight and it's doing well, other international airlines are like, what did I miss? Why, should not, why am I not there? I think when we have the bus from St. Pete, it's going to be full, especially with the Wi-Fi, which you're going to vote yes. on today. That's a brilliant, brilliant move. Because people, when they can be productive on the bus, it doesn't matter if it takes 20 or 30 or 40 minutes. Right. As long as I'm able to work and communicate, it, it just enhances the whole experience. So I forgot the commute. I, I don't know if we can go back a couple of slides to show the, the express routes, but I wanted Brad just to talk about the connections that we're anticipating. Okay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Welch, and thank you too to Joe for including this slide. As it shows on this uh, map here, um, as, he, as uh, Joe mentioned, the green lines, the Green Line Pinellas plan includes. Uh, several express routes to the airport and to downtown Tampa. Right now we have two that go to Tampa only Monday through Friday. So all of these services are, are planned to go seven days a week 
and to try to capture the times that the flights run, which is pretty much, what, from 5 to mm -hmm. 10. Because yep. um, you have to, you, when you land at uh, the airport, you want to make sure that you can get, get to where you need to go. So um, the Greenlight Plan has a phased plan for implementing, as uh, Mr. Johnson said, from Clearwater Beach to uh, the airport and from downtown St. Pete to the airport. Uh, you can see there's another Ulmerton Road connection uh, to the airport. And then there's um, from northern Pinellas County park and rides and then over Tampa Road down the memorial uh, to the airport. The West Shore uh, Multimodal Center is the key. And so we, uh, it is a very important component to put in place. The one issue that exists right now is that if we, if we want to provide service to downtown Tampa and to the airport, it takes about, we estimate about uh, 10 minutes to get off, get off, go up to the airport, drop off the customers, pick up customers, and come back down and then go on to Tampa with the same bus. So really, to provide the better direct connection, you have to have separate routes serving the airport in downtown Tampa. Once we have that uh, the multimodal center in place where you can basically check, you know, you can take your bags right there and then get on a people mover right to the airport, then it's actually much more efficient because then the service can take people from Pinellas to there, to the airport, and then folks that want to go to downtown Tampa also can, can keep going on the same, same route. So uh, that star there uh, becomes a brighter star, I think, once the, once the uh, West Shore Multimodal Center is in place. Okay. Thank you, Brad, for reviewing that. Um, final question, what's the timing on the rental car center? What's your target completion date? Hopefully we'll all be there celebrating uh, in October of 2017. 2017. That's been our date, uh, and, and I will tell you that we have a fantastic contracting team on board. Um, we are moving at pace, uh, not too fast, not too slow, just at pace to hit that date. We're so far on budget and on time, so I'm happy to report that. The other thing, Brad, to your point about the buses, with all these buses, the people now have an option to either drive your car and rent a parking space from us, or you can take a bus. And if you know, I know parking can be expensive, sometimes $100 to park at the airport. Mm -hmm. You can ride this bus, so it's going to save people money. Yeah. And it's going to save me money because as we grow 20 years, I don't want to be keep on building parking garages. They're pretty expensive. So if we find other solutions, it's even better for the, the community. Um, thank you very much for having me here today, and, and uh, I wish you all well with, with what you are bringing forward. Mr. Lapano, thank you so much thank for your you, leadership. Sir. We appreciate it.